Do you believe in miracles? We got Fizzle in the house. Fizzle, what what's up, Fizzle? good, man? Fizzle, glad to have you here. Let's go. This the South Harmon Podcast. Glad you here today. Hit that Patreon link if you here to stay. Dynasty best ball, that's my favorite way. 40 chess trade show. Let's make a trade today or check an AMA. You know Adam at the ATM. Mike always in the building. He gonna stay with him. They gonna start every show off with their own trade. Fantasy's a big ocean, they made their own wave. Make sure you tap in there Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesday night, Saturday morning, ain't no better way. Hit that notification bell when the news break. Go subscribe right now, don't get the news late. Destination Devi, that's the team. Dynasty football, man, that's my favorite thing. I remember Biggie said it was all a dream. Now people watching on their phones and computer screens. Welcome to the team. Welcome back in, everybody, to another edition of the Dynasty Trade Show. Thank you so much for joining us. And by the time you have seen this, uh, we were just made aware of it. Shortly before recording this episode, we have hit 2,000 subscribers. So big thank you to everybody out there who's helped us get to this. It seemed like it took forever to get to 1,000, and 2,000 was like that. But the support, the undying gratitude that we have is meant it's meant it's heartfelt thank you so much for that hey go check us out too while you're here southharmonff.com warp tool we'll be talking about it way too much adam's got an incredible series coming out with scott connor where they're gonna dive even more into warp and if you want your deals featured on here patreon.com forward slash south harmon one dollar get you in the door get you the shithead trades channel one dollar to post your your victories or your else either way but we'll be the judge of the victories of the l's adam what are the final determination let's go that, that's one of my favorite things too in the shithead trades channel mike is when people start like claiming the deal and i'm like we'll get it we'll get it don't worry um you know we got you yeah you guys can put your guesses in here but uh we'll be the judge of this uh of this peasant trade all right <laughs> but uh yeah oh man it, it, uh, other than that if you uh you know if you wouldn't mind just go down and hit the like subscribe we already are at 2000 which is crazy so um every one of you that keeps doing that greatly appreciate it hope we'll keep bringing you value and probably more entertainment than value but uh mike without further ado you know what fizzle says right we get into a trade of yours all right mike so let's see what you did here um this is an interesting one 12 team super flex lineup start 13 with a half point tight end premium um, Mike, lineup start 13 is a long one. Uh, talk to the people here what you got going. It's Jerry Judy you are acquiring, mm -hmm. as well as a few picks, 24 fourth, 24 fifth, obviously the 25 second, uh, a little different there. Send it away George Kittle. So with only the half point tight end premium, uh, talk to people. Why did you make this trade? Well, this is a rebuilding team. or in the process of rebuilding. Uh, I think this is the second year of a rebuild. Uh, so I'm just in the mode of just acquiring assets and anything that's, you know, not tied down. <laughs> We're just trying to flip off, trying to get as much values as humanly possible. This is another thing when we first launched the warp tool that you're looking at. And I'm going, man, like there's there's so much pressure or like inflated value we put on the tight end position and half point tight end premium leaks where they really don't actually matter <laughs> that much like they. They just really don't. And what is George Kittle going to fetch me? And I'm just looking at deals like, hey, what could I like flip them to? Like, what are some assets that have the possibility of at least maintaining value? They're not going to go down. Right. Um, you know, people will be interested in them because it's a start 13, right? It's deeper lineups, a lot of flex spots to fill. And I go, wide receivers. So, like, what could I get in the tier of, like, wide receivers? And what kind of leverage move could I make where – it's going to feel like somebody's jumping up to get that tight end that they need for their lineup. Yes. Right? That's the thing yes. that's going to break it for them. Yep. And I can get a wide receiver and I can get some draft capital back, right? I get the two for one. So if the wide right. receiver fails, you still got the fallback of the draft capital. Or if I hit on the the draft capital, the wide receiver that I got back, 
you know, it's, it's almost like a free one. So mm-hmm. this is the kind of move, you know, 2025 is, is whenever, but I just want to hoard as many assets as possible, future draft capital ones, because those pick values aren't going down. And this isn't me going like the fourth and the fifth is worth anything, man. It was just throw-ins and toss-ins that you toss into the deal just to, you know, kind of grease it over the line, like right. to tax them a little bit. But the second in 25 devalued because it's a few years out. But Jerry Judy is a wide receiver that – I think last year at this time, you and I are like, nah, like we're we're Cortland Sutton guys, right? Big the time. Way he, Big time. The way he, the way he played last year and finished the season, especially with with Russ, who we both expect to be better, right? It really lends me to kind of being more in on Jerry Judy. I'm a lot more in on Jerry Judy than I think I've ever been. Um, not that I'm ever projecting him to be the you know a threat for a top twelve wide receiver in dynasty ever, but. You know, in that wide receiver two range, man, like a perennial DJ Moore type. Right? And if he can just do that, he's got the youth part on his side. So yep. I don't think his value is going to tank unless he just comes out and he's absolutely atrocious, right? If he has a, a, a horrible year, then people are done. They're not gonna, they're not gonna want Jerry Judy no more. But the youth part kind of plays into it, and I get a pick. So this was this was easy for me because George Kittle was a piece that I was actively trying to move off my roster and yeah the minute somebody showed any type of interest in kittle i was like well let's see what i can get off of you and i think i might have started with like judy and two seconds or something and this is where it came to you know you shoot a little bit higher and then they, they fall back and they're like i'll give you a second and you know a fourth and a fifth okay we're done like we're done negotiating it's good enough for me i got the base of what i wanted out of the deal yeah i think see, knowing that part in the rebuild side mike this one for me is is not that difficult just because one it's a lineup start 13 and for those of you that don't play in um a lineup league that big 12 teams and 13 starters like that's a deep starting lineup right so you're already getting two pieces you may not think much of a 25 second but if you do that enough times you'll be the one that has the depth when all the injuries come around and there's you know attrition and this is not even on the rebuilder context just having right. the, the two pieces having that liquidity even though it's devalued right now to send away um, build that capital up but then see i think on the rebuild side what's really nice too mike is obviously you get younger and judy but he's still with those spike weeks that we saw him have with russ like this is one of those that i think you can re-roll into a flip again right like when you're on a rebuild that's the other reason i really like this is you get that second now as the edge piece and now you could reroll Judy at the right time. And the rebuild, what's so great about that, too, is if you keep doing those type of moves over and over, you, you don't have to win every deal criminally value-wise, right? Like someone might look at this and be like, oh, I'll take Kittle, right? But mm-hmm. you could do enough of that over and over. You just keep collecting value. And there's going to be times, watch, somebody that you don't think is you know, ever going to be traded one for one for Judy may be injured for four weeks, five weeks, six yep. weeks, right? That's ahead of Judy. And boom, you make that one for one lateral move where they need the points and you don't. And that's one of the things about being flexible in a rebuild too. It's a, uh, so when I talked about it from the warp standpoint, right? South arm and FF.com and check out the warp tool and plug the league in, you know, in this league, Kittle was a last year tight end for 1.23 warp. And for reference, like Jerry Judy, he finished as wide receiver 28.9 warp. But some of the things we talked about, like had a much better finish to the end of the year. He did have a little stretch in there where he didn't play. The offense was horrible at the beginning of the year with Hackett and Russ played his worst year you've ever seen. Oh, rough. To get to 1.23 warp, like Jerry Judy just needs to finish in that wide receiver 20 range, like right around that ballpark. That's all he has to do to match – the same warp advantage that George Kittle was giving me in, in this exact league. So it's not a stretch to say, like, easily, one for one. They could be the same thing, Absolutely. like, in the long run. Yet one asset is not as fragile because it, it doesn't have the age, right? It doesn't have the age of George Kittle. It doesn't have the injury history like George Kittle, who has at the tight end position. I mean, Judy's got his own injury problems. But not like George Kittle. It just seems like he's always getting banged up. And he's older. Like the yeah. cliff comes a lot faster for him than it's ever going to come for Jerry Judy. And you just throw some draft capital on top of it. And you're like, yeah, like I could almost make this deal one for one. Right. But if you can get any type of like leverage piece on it, like insurance essentially on the deal, 
Like, I feel really good about it. And especially when I'm not, I'm not trying to team build now. When you're in a rebuilder, it's like, I, I don't care who the hell's in my tight end slot. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to accrue as much value as humanly possible. So these are the kind of deals that I think if you make them, and you and I have done a lot of these on our rebuilders, right? We don't always have to hit the home run. And it might be, you know, you'll have, you know, 2,000 people watch this video. A 1,000 of them may go, I'd rather have George Kittle. There might be a thousand who want Jerry Judy, or maybe the 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 ratio is is more on the Kittle side. But these are the kind of ones that, over the course, if you look back on this in twenty twenty five, whenever this pick comes up, if I make it or if I traded it, or you know, we look in the future, you go, "Oh yeah, man, that was a smash deal." <laughs> but it's the hindsight that you're looking at. It's not at the moment. At the moment, people look at it and go, "It's pretty fair." Another thing about it too is. These are the ones I really like to make in the leagues because it gives you a nice rapport with with the manager, right? You're not going to come on the trade show and be like, "Oh my god, this, this where I feel guilty is when I What did you do to deals. this poor soul, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You like to make these ones where they're they're kind of in the middle, but you feel good about it through your process. So, you get a nice rapport with them and it's yes. a trade partner down the line where it goes like, "Oh, he's pretty reasonable. What he traded me get on." You know, it's it's going to take a few years before the you realize that, you know, it might be a landmine. <laughs> like I just, I put a landmine on your team and I'm going to capitalize whenever that 25 seconds is good or I move it for something else and Jerry Judy's still in the league putting up wide receiver two numbers. Yeah, uh, that, that's a great point, especially about the rebuild side, right? Now, you may be watching this and, and you watch the trade show, but you're not a high volume trader. You're like, ah, this doesn't feel like enough for me to move off the kittle. But the rapport thing is so big, Mike, when you're in a rebuild because – if you're actually in a rebuild, I got news for everyone. If you're in a rebuild without trading, you are totally screwed without trading yes. if you're rebuilding, yeah. right? Now, th the same can be true on the contending side, but if you are a, a strongly built contender, you might even be able to handle a few injuries. You may not have to trade as much if your roster construction is right. If you're rebuilding, you are completely SOL if you stick with that same roster over and over, even if you hit on picks, right? Like you need to do so much in a rebuild. So the rapport thing is huge in a rebuild, but overall as well, I like it a lot. All right, Mike, interesting deal for you. Let's, uh, let's get into one that's not as sexy. Um, a couple guys that I know you're, you're a big fan of one, big fan of the other, in and out. Let's talk about Zach's deal, man. 12-team Superflex best ball, half-point uh, PPR, Start 10, the best of the rest for warp settings. I don't know if you think we need to pull it or not. One for one deal. Worthy still gets Gabe Davis. Zach, I'm not good, gets James Cook. What say you, Iowa Michael? Oh, I'm, I'm taking the James Cook side here every day of the week. Uh, yeah. Irregardless of format, man. <laughs> irregardless of format. Now, Well, that's why I, I said I don't even know it. if we need to pull up the warp tool, but yeah. I do want to plug it in just because I'm curious, right? Does it confirm my priors or not? Does it does it does it tell me I'm an idiot? Believe does me, it tell we, me we, I've been doing we have it wrong? the we have the tool, right? We have the tools. We might as well use them. <laughs> we might as well. I'll pull it up here, Adam. But they're the uh, same. This, they're a lot of the same one, when you look at it, right? This is the one for me where I look at it and I go, I'd much rather have James Cook than Gabe Davis. I don't think Gabe Davis is that good. And I, I kind of said it, you know, it's funny that it's I'm not good making the trade, but I don't think D Gabe Davis is good, period. Uh, I didn't think it last year when everybody mm -hmm. was in on him. I sure as hell don't think about it this year. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> he does have the potential to spike, right? He's on a Josh Allen offense. And, and the only thing that kind of lends you to making the case for Gabe Davis here is the fact that best ball. He's, a re he's a receiver and it's best ball, right? Yeah. Like, I would never – want to have to start Gabe Davis in a lineup league ever like start 14 Adam I <laughs> Gabe now, Davis in a I'm, flex you oh, don't I still I'm with you in it. lineup you don't feel great but if like you're telling me he's your in that league you're talking your fourth flex I'd rather have something else don't get me wrong but it, you could probably do worse I but, but to your point a thousand percent man Gabe Davis is one of these players where like you and I have dunked on him for how long, Mike? And it's not that we didn't like him. It's just that he was too highly valued. And then you have the lineup issue. Right. You can't start him. The one thing in best ball, Mike, is that he's a lot, lot more interesting to me in best ball. Because if I build my receiver room the right way, like let's say I get, you know, eight, ten receivers, I don't care when he does nothing. And he's going to do nothing a lot of the weeks. But 
there's weeks with Josh Allen where he goes for what? I mean, it's not – we've seen the guy go completely nuclear before. Now, in this deal, I'm not saying that I want the Gabe Davis side. This is just a, a more of a context on Gabe Davis, and best ball is a lot more intriguing to me than in lineup, to your point. This is weird because the warp – because half PPR best ball leagues, okay? So yeah. half PPR best ball leagues, I've seen yeah. a lot of warp graphs, and, and there's a very strong correlation between half PPR and full PPR, like how different they are, okay? Yep. Full PPR, I'm telling you almost universally from everything I've seen, like wide receivers one for one over running backs are, are going to kick their ass. Correct. It, it, like, yes. It just does. It, unless you have point per carry leagues, which then bounces that out and flips the whole thing on its head again. But we're just talking PPR versus half PPR as far as warp goes. Half PPR, these graphs overlay themselves. Straight, Literally, it's right one now. of those where if you don't pull, like it, you can click on the warp tool, right? You can click running back on right. and off. You can, if you don't do that, you're going to have a hard time even finding the specific points because they run so same so similar which is not what i expected for half ppr so there must be some other scoring things in this as well this is where i look at like gabe davis and i'm like man he's a wide receiver three at best for me like maybe mm -hmm. i think james cook because of the running back and, and you know i gave i gave gabe davis credit for being in a josh allen led offense right i, I did for sure. i think james cook has a skill set even in half ppr he has a skill set to be I'm not going to say an RB2, but like really push to like fall into that back end RB2 range. And if that's the case, we're talking a difference of like 12 spots. And in warp wise, you're going to get far more out of a guy who has the potential to be an RB24, 25, 26 than you are a guy whose potential is wide receiver 30, 31, 32, 33, you know, so on and so forth. You're going to want the running back in a half PPR. Yep. If this was PPR, I think because it's best ball, like you could really, really make a case for yeah. Gabe Davis. And I'm sure there'd be a lot of people who are like, ah, take Gabe Davis. And I completely understand it. Half yep. PPR, the the hate I have for Gabe Davis is not There it is. Hate. I, I just, knew we could get the hate coming out of him, man. <laughs> and the, the love I still have for James Cook. I want James Cook in this in this deal. And Warp is telling me that that's probably the best play to make because – you, you look at it like last year. Gabe Davis didn't have the greatest year, right? But he Correct. was warp-wise wide receiver 27, full transparency. It was pretty good. Yep. But you know who was RB28, like right there with him, like .01 warp off? His I teammate, a, Devin Singletary, in the I, same I have an idea. Offense. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how they correlate together and have PPR with this league setting. So uh, I'm going to take James Cook here, and I think – if James Cook is one of those guys, like we've seen Gabe Davis go out in the playoffs, right? No fantasy football is being played, but everybody's watching, right? Sure. The playoffs. We saw him go out Absolutely and cook, blow cook, up. cook a team. Cook Speaking a team of and cook, do something, yeah. right? <laughs> do something we had never seen. And, and Gabe Davis never really hit that ascension in value, right? Like, sure, some people sold him high. And you what did everybody do when that game happened? 100%. It, your leagues 100%. are over. But everybody you saw on all your sleeper leagues on the trade block, Gabe Davis, because they're all wanting to right. move him and nobody traded him. If, if James Cook still has that ability because he he's, hasn't been in the league for as long, right? Yeah. We don't have the fatigue. James Cook comes out early in the season and he has 100 total yards and a couple touchdowns. Uh -oh. In this offense, people will lose their fucking minds, man. The bump will be insane. It'll be like, this is, this is the Buffalo Bills' Tony yes. Pollard. The, that James what, Cook rookie Buffalo euphoria Bills, thing right. is be yeah. right back, yeah. man. Right back. Right. So yes. even then, if it was just a flippability thing, you're going to be able to get more out of James Cook early in the season if he does something than you will Gabe Davis because we've already seen it. Like people know, oh, yeah, he'll have a spike and then he'll be right back to getting you three points. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Two catches. Two I, catches, 14 yards. Congratulations. Man, I, I you know what's crazy, though, Mike? I, you make a lot of really good points, um, so there's not a, a ton more to add to it other than I'll say this. From the from the roster construction standpoint, when like if you go back and listen, um, you know, the, the free content, the series we did with Scott, which is, I think, tremendous. If, you, if you're newer to best ball or don't play in a lot or you just wanted to have more best ball full team construction, that series is worth it. And when you think about it from that standpoint, Mike, You'd rather have the James Cook because it's harder to get the top forty running backs in, in Dynasty. There's not as many, right? Yes. And you can replace yes. the receiver. So that's that's one of the big things in the roster construction that does make me want to take the James Cook side. I will say this though. 
this why this why this one's tough. I'm going to say James Cook because I don't have enough context to take Gabe Davis. And here here's the one way I would take Gabe, Mike, is this. If if you've been in this league for a while, right, and let's say you've built up a, a true stable of backs, like I I know there's James Cook upside, and I believe in him not nearly as much as you, but I do believe in him over Gabe Davis, right? But the one thing we do know about Gabe Davis is the weeks he spikes, like that is a game winning type of thing that can matter for you, right? So if I built up like a stable of eight, nine running backs, not that I don't like James Cook, but I don't think he's going to win me weeks as maybe, maybe more often he's consistent, but if, even if it's three times, those Gabe Davis weeks are ridiculous for a team, right? When he just takes over and has yeah. those nut yeah. games, I think that could be the upside for taking the Gabe Davis out if you did. Honestly, as gross as it looks with Gabe Davis in it, um, I think it's a fair deal. I want Cook in a vacuum, but I kind of gave you the reasons why I might want Gabe, and I would need to know that going in. That was a good one. That was a good one to discuss, man. It was, it was. man. It's fun it, for for a one for one deal too. That's tough uh, to get that much discussion. All right, does, draw does that four. Mean I could get, does that mean I could get James Cook on the thumbnail? I thought you were going to ask for game da- for Gabe Davis on the thumbnail. <laughs> Stop it. Do you, do you do you want do you want James Cook on the thumbnail, Mike? Is that what you want? I don't know. We got more trades to do. Let's see we'll, if we. <laughs> we'll discuss at the end. The, we'll reconvene. James Cook thumbnail. I I don't know if the James Cook thumbnail is going to bring in the viewership. If it was after that hundred yard game that we're uh, wish casting, maybe we could talk about it, right? All right, yeah, draw four. 20, 2024 first is being acquired um, for Elijah Moore and Sam Howe. Twelve team Superflex PPR lineup start ten FF Ballers is the league. <laughs> I don't know that it matters, Mike. Um, I don't. I don't need the warp. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like we can, we can discuss the warp tool. It's at our fingertips, but do we need it? I mean, nope. This is easy, man. And and you know, I like Elijah Moore. I'm like back in on him, even though it's a bad bad bet, right? Debro Debro pointed that out. It's a probably maybe a bad bet maybe in us. best ball I could be a, like in to an extent right. on him, but in lineup. Start 10? If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna sit here and dunk on Gabe Davis, man, you definitely gotta dunk on the same process and Elijah Moore, and it's not best ball; it's lineup start ten. So right, uh, Sam Howell's my guy, man. But uh, you know that my guy thing kind of ended. Uh, mm-hmm. I just have like, I have a little bit of love left for Sam Howell because he was my, you know, was my guy. And then when you get drafted with fifth round draft capital, you just kind of go, okay, okay. Like I'm glad he's getting a chance to start. Okay, but. Let's just say the odds probably aren't great that Sam Howe is ever a long-term starter in the NFL. It's going to be more like if Sam Howe could have the career like Andy Dalton had, it'd be a win. It'd be a could, massive uh, win. But that's a long shot. That's do you think? Shot. Do you think that Sam Howe could be as good as Brissett was last year? Maybe, maybe. I. You know what I, that would be in this league is point two eight and warp. Yeah, no one cares about that really. And, and and that's actually where the warp matters is like he, he, on process it would be a terrible thing to take the Elijah Moore side here right just on process alone horrible horrible, horrible. now granted I mean I have seen deals Mike we've talked about and in process make zero sense you fast forward six months and you're like damn it the process was wrong here right like the, the players win okay let's even say Elijah Moore is one of these comeback stories just uh the New York situation, everything, the doghouse was all terrible. And Sam Howell just didn't get the requisite draft capital, but he's actually a good quarterback. But, like, what has to happen? Think about the odds of that having to happen to win. Right. Right. <laughs> Where, you know what can easily happen is Sam Howell, even if he does become a starter, let's say for, let's say he earns, like, a starting job for two years. Like, what does that even matter, really? Like what? What would that necessarily even matter? It, when you look at Warp, Mike, that's where I want to talk about it. Quarterback twelve and and down. It's all like under one in this league last year. There, there's a real scenario that even if Sam Howell's a little better than we think, it doesn't matter. And and then what? What are you? What are you risking? What you're risking is tremendous upside in a twenty-four first. A generic, a random could be right. anywhere. Right. Tremendous upside. Like I don't know if you've uh, seen the things on Twitter, but there's been pretty good discussion over the last couple of weeks about Brock Bowers and like some of the NFL yeah. rumors and what scouts yeah. think about him and right the size, know, right? Like he could be the uh, the the highest. He could be right up there with with Kyle Pitts as far as draft capital. And then 
you fast forward a couple of days and what's the next one? It's it's from the same account with insider knowledge of scouts talking about mm-hmm. Marvin Harrison Jr. And right. he could be the highest wide receiver ever drafted. Uh, there's some real talk about he could go number one, even in a class that's got Caleb Williams in it. So when you look at it, you know, I have no idea where this pick projects at all. And uh, it, I don't think it really matters, man. Just give me as many shots as I can for this price. I'll send you every bit of Elijah Moore. I'll send you two more of these guys if you want. <laughs> you got another 24 I was first? about to ask, Mike. I got two more of these kind of players on my team. You can have them. Let me ask you this, Mike. It, if you added your second to this deal, I don't no team context, not right. generic second. Are you still in? Yeah, I think I am. I think I am. <laughs> That's the point. Is the upside in a lineup start ten? The upside of what a twenty-four first you could draft, you could trade for. It, it's it's not close, man. Um, we've done too much <laughs> talking about it without saying it's a terrible, terrible trade and a great trade for draw four. Um, right, definitely uh, on his side. All right, uh, Blitz. By the way, Blitz. Uh, love Dan Hoos. He's always, you know, he's he's like a unpaid moderator in a way mike he's always like making sure things are going right in the discord he's putting (laughs) stuff on the here like i i was like you know what i'm not even going to put the scrolling text here because it's all right here for you you know so the the league name is the best place um he's talking about here you know the 40 chest dynasty trades of south Harmon. 12 team super flex best ball start 12 mike with two tight ends uh it's ppr it's 0.75 tight end premium there is a point Two five points per carry and for first down. Mike Aaron Rodgers and Mike Gasecki or a early to mid twenty four second that he's sending away. Um interestingly enough though, it's going back to that manager, right? right? So yeah, that's one of the things I'm seeing, which kind of makes me think he's leaning into the rebuild, getting these picks, and then that twenty four third, which could end up being pretty late. He he's saying mid if it goes wrong, late if it goes right, right? Because he's going to try to win. Right. Curious your thoughts here. I mean, to to me, it's it's this is a clear win for me on an acceptable level. If I'm trying to win right now, given that it's a quarterback, I know it's an older one. I know it's could he could not be that good. But if someone needs their pick back, and I'm getting a starting quarterback in 12 team super flex best ball that we have seen be very good in matter and warp, I'm I'm in. Uh, a lot of people thinking best ball right um you know and we've kind of we we talked about this with scott man even if you start with two let's say top five options at quarterback right that's what you've got people go a lot of fallacy is they go i'm good i don't need anything else yeah i'm good i'm gonna let these guys do do all the weeks for me we're good last year man there was one quarterback who was above average every single week and that man's patrick mahomes nobody else nobody else so there are weeks where you need that third option in my opinion adam i want four of them now to varying degrees of where they go like i don't sure need and cost three. dependent right yeah i don't need three top eight quarterbacks like that's awesome if i have them but i'm gonna try to leverage them in some other things buying a guy like aaron Rodgers is probably unsexy as hell it is and in a lineup league adam if i gotta pay like the early second to do it like, I want him as my third quarterback, but I don't know if I want to pay that price. Like, I'd rather go shop for a third quarterback. Let's say I do have two top eight options already in a lineup league. I'm going to go shop at the the Ryan Tannehill discount store. I'm going to go yeah. shop at the, the Baker Mayfield. Sam Howell. Grass, you know? grass, the Sam Howell, the, the Desmond Ritter store. That's where I want to go shop. And the Matthew Stafford, I'm kicking the tires and seeing what the cost is there. Right. In a best ball league, though, to get Aaron Rodgers as your third or maybe in Blitz's case, his fourth quarterback, like that's massive. And it's massive, and I'm willing to pay the 201 if that is the worst-case scenario to go do it on a contender. Because I know there's going to be three, four weeks where Aaron Rodgers either spikes or he outperforms the other quarterbacks on my roster, and I am guaranteed to have an advantage at my super flex spot every right. single week over the league. Yep, Mike Gusecki has a throw-in. I'm not a big Gasecki fan, but you know that's one of the tight ends you just throw shit at the wall, man. And and he's better than some of these guys I'm taking in some of my best ball leagues at the tight end position. Like I'd, that's, I'd kill to have like a Gasecki type on there. And he that's one of the best parts for, about this deal. He, he got him for a late third. 
like yes. he did. It's just, uh, you know, this is where you have the draft capital and you just toss it around. <laughs> now, I will say this on the other side, though, for, for the guy who's getting his second back. Let's be honest. Though. What were you really hoping? <laughs> like, if you're rebuilding Adam, what are you really hoping to get out of Aaron Rodgers? I don't think there's a lot of people out there, even at best ball, he's like, I'll give you a first. Like, I will. You know I what, though? I go, I get my 201 back. Thank you. Like, as long as as long thing. as this person is savvy enough to now make yes. that value happen, there's Lean there's truth it. to that. Yes. Yeah. Now right. some people might not want to tear it down enough. Like I don't want to go nuclear rebuild. So now this is the two oh five, two oh four, and maybe that class you know, twenty four we don't know yet, but it doesn't look as deep as it looks top heavy, and then all of a sudden, you know, do you want your a Josh Downs type for Aaron Rodgers? Right. No. Right. Um right. so right. I'm with you, by the way. I, I agree to the other side. I, I would say, if depending on the situation and the direness of it, you're making this deal in June or July. I'm sorry. Now we do know that Aaron Rodgers is older, um, and you know he doesn't have like the hottest market. But this is one of those, Mike, where it's not going to be that long till buys are around, and you know by the time buys hit, what's going to happen? Like I don't wish it on anybody. But there's going to be quarterback injuries. It just yeah. It's the truth. Now, it could be Aaron Rodgers. Then you take a big L, right? If you have a hurt Aaron Rodgers, you do take a big L. So there's the, there's the risk there. But are you telling me one of these contending teams that has a, a you know, 5-2, and 6-1 and one record and needs a quarterback what isn't coming like, hey, here's my late first for Aaron Rodgers. That, I think you could hold out for more there. But I, I'll say going back to the blitz side because I think – Here's what's great about it. In best ball, you want to have no less than three, really, right, at QB, and you want to have up to five. You're getting one for a pick that has no ability to go past 201. The 13th pick in the worst-case scenario for you. That's a win. That is a 1,000% a win. And then the tight end, grabbing a body, right? Here's the thing. A two tight end, and we know warp is basically, even when you look at this. Now, because it is two tight end, the warp, it's the, the the steepness of the curve is very obviously ridiculous from one to two. It's that way in every league you look at. But from like two to six, it's not nearly as steep. And then from right. six to 24, those ones all are a lot higher than, you know, when you get to 30s and 40s. Gusecki's probably teetering on the edge of that. But for a late third, you just want to keep throwing bodies in there, man. That's what you want to do in two tight end. You don't want to pay up for all those high-end ones if you don't have to. Throw in a bunch of Mike Gusecki's, man. You get, like, I think this deal for liquidity is one of those where I'll do this in July, I'll do this in June, I'll do this in May. It just makes too much sense. Yeah, it's uh, the fair price. But I understand the other side as well. Like, I do. It's probably the best you can hope for, in my opinion. All right, Mike. So we're looking at here. Uh, Hawaii is getting DeAndre Hopkins in a 24 first, uh, sending away Hunter Henry, K. Dotton, Brees Hall. Here's the other part about this deal, Mike. Um, he says here that this is a projected 101 to 102. 12 team Superflex PPR start nine lineup. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, man. I was just looking at it as a random 24 first, and I'm going, all right, man. Like, people are pretty out on D Hop because he just doesn't have a team, right? Right. It's kind of like the Dalvin Cook thing. Like, you do a startup right now with Hopkins. Um, D Hop, like these kind of guys, Fournette, um, Zeke, like these guys who don't have a team, people forget about them, and they get pushed down ADP, and it's almost like we have this built in where you're like, oh, they're never playing football again. Like surprise, in the next couple months you're gonna hear them sign somewhere. Remember when people <laughs> thought that about Lamar? <laughs> oh, that was wild. Um, I'm thinking about obviously it different here with Nuke, but point still like, stands. Like Nuke is fine, start night in the lineup. He, Whatever team he ends up going, you're probably putting DeAndre Hopkins in your lineup. I sure as hell know I'm putting Brees Hall in. I'm thinking, like, is this enough? Like, is this enough? Am I going to jump back in on the running back thing, or do I want the uh, the wide receiver? Adam, you tell me this thing even has a chance, a chance, being the top five pick, even a chance, let alone the 101, 102, 103. Jesus. Like, I'll take the D-hop in the first side. Like, I'll compete this year, and I'll let you screw this up, and and I'll take Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., <laughs> Brock 
Powers Drake May, one of these guys next year, and you're going to look like a complete fool. And the best part about it, he planted a running back on him. That's Coming that. That I think is the big thing, right? Like, I like Brees a lot, and I know you do too. But we've kind of been do. down this road of. I'm not. I'm not sitting here trying to shit on Brees Hall for what it's worth. I, I no. think he's still a great, great talent. Um, but this year no, could be a little dicey, Brees, right? I want Brees Hall on my team. I just don't want to rely on him the first five, six weeks, seven weeks coming off an ACL because it's never gone well for me outside of what Adrian Peterson way back in the day. <laughs> Like right. even even Saquon, man, we did the backflips for Saquon coming off his ACL, and he had a couple great great weeks. But it took him a couple weeks to get to those great weeks, and then he had that freak injury, which I'm not going to attribute anything to the ACL, right? Where he stepped on the foot at the Dallas game. But up until then, he like those two weeks before, he's putting up 20 points per game. Like it was back to being Saquon that we knew. And then the rest of the season after that that weird stepping on the foot thing was was not very good Saquon. Like it was slowed up Saquon. So I don't know. I don't want to put my eggs in a basket. Like I want Brees Hall on my team. Um, like having him on a contender is fine. But man, like to to leverage what could be a very early twenty four first and send away D Hop in a start nine for Brees Hall, and now I'm like. He's the one who's gonna save me from this pick being Caleb Williams. No, thank you. I don't. I don't want to make that bet. Right. Well, that, that that's the crazy part, Mike. Is that when you think about it? Um, when we talk about breaking the deal down, right? So if you tell me right now, my Brees goes for the early twenty four first. I'm taking the early twenty four first. You can kick rocks. I like Brees a lot, but I'm if it's one hundred one, one hundred two, even if it says one hundred one to one hundred three, Brees is gone just because it's a running back. There's Caleb. There's May, and um. You want to talk about Twitter timelines and, you know, the stuff. Like, I'm telling you, there's people right now in Superflex that are feeling so bad for Marv. There, there's going to be some Marv going at 101. It's going to happen. Yeah. Trust okay. me. I'm, yeah. So, now I'm really interested in those top two, three picks. Now, here's the crazy part, Mike. So, if we say that that's at least a win on the early 24 first, but let's say it's closer. Like, it's it's closer in value. What? Hunter, I, listen, I like Hunter Henry, and I like I don't I don't really like Kate Otten. I like Hunter Henry at the crazy criminal cost. <laughs> Lineup start nine. I, you could tell me this tight end premium has to be you know two or something. I'm still taking Nuke over those two tight ends, man. Get out of here. Yes, yes. Stupid shit, man. This, this is, is Hawaii killed this one. Hawaii went to Mount know. Everest on that one, man. Everest, what in the world are you I doing? <laughs> I don't need Warp to tell me this one was horrible. I do need the league simulator um, because, Mike, that's just that's just criminal stuff here. All right, so let's get into this one here, Mike. Uh, the 5J, new patron member of ours, uh, first deal, he's throwing in the trade show. 10-team super flex lineup, start 10, non-tight end premium. The league is called RTDB. He's receiving Nick Chubb for the 110 and Greg Dolchich, Mike. Um, I like the fact that the new patrons come in and they dr- immediately drop a 10-team league. At least it's not an eight-team league. They drop a ten-team league, but they make it so easy to deal where I don't even have to bother to look it up. I don't need analysis. Uh, it's a it's after a last night. League. I do really wish it was an eight-team league. Um, it's a know. ten-team non-tight end premium league, right? You're only starting ten. I give zero shits about Greg Dolchitz. Zero shits about Greg Dolchitz. I'll throw him into every single deal if that's the thing that gets it over. I don't care. It's never an overpay. I'll throw Greg Dolchitz in. I'm good. Right, Nick Chubb for the one ten, man. Well, easy. Cash here's money for me. I'm taking. Give, I'm taking the Chubster. Can I at least give you why in warp? Um, your point is very valid on Greg Dolchich, and you it run it in matter. here. <laughs> no, but you need you need to run it though to see oh, what you're talking about, right? Because people listen, Mike. This is no this is no slight to you, but people have got up here and been like. Yeah, McNutt, it's you know he's smoking crack again or something, right? Like they've they've heard you say some crazy stuff. Warp, you can't you can't tell it anything but it's truth. And here's what Warp says that confirms Iowa Michael's take. Mike starting at tight end eight last year. Every every tight end from eight and beyond negative warp. Mm. Negative warp. You better off literally negative warp. Way. It's hard to get to negative warp. Um, I've seen a lot of these lines. Now, there are some leagues. But to start at tight end 8 at negative warp, Mike, for example, TJ Hawkinson's 
So, like, if you're not the top four, I mean, you are completely not just replaceable. You should be trying to replace it. Like, it's not it's not worth putting any investment into the position unless you're getting the complete hammer is the point you're making. So, now if it's just the 110 and 10 team, right? So, the other thing about the 10 team is this is, this is the last pick in the draft, right? And then... It's also last pick in the first round. Sorry, uh, the first <laughs> round hope, of the draft. I hope it ain't a one round what rookie draft. Now that would be now that would be a league Mike would love a ten team with one round of drafting. <laughs> um, right, it's the last pick. But the thing is, too, the quarterbacks, the high end ones, will go. But then the rest of them, people don't care about. Right, so it's like right. this. This pick just isn't enough for me in this league where we're we're consi- we're consolidating. To get let's, to Chubb, like let's think no. about it. That no one did get you what Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> Here you go. Here's another negative warp guy. Hey, let me give you two <laughs> negative warp guys on a platter. My God. <laughs> and I'll take Nick Chubb, who's definitely positive warp. You know what I like is I, I like too like the uh, the patrons that come in. They like wait a little bit. They're like, watch when I send a deal. Finally, it's gonna be such a smash. <laughs> like I can't wait to watch this episode because it's just it. good deal, man. Great deal. Um, all right, Mike. Master Vader, another new patron. Uh, spicy one, but this one is pretty easy for me. 12-team Superflex PPR lineup start 11. Uh, it's called the Dynasty Auctioneers. Mike, I don't know where you're at if you want to pull up Warp or not on this one. I but not uh, Warp for this one either. This is pretty easy for me. Well, I'm not saying you need it, but it, I, if you want to pull it up is uh, more, let me, let me say it that way. So go ahead, Mike. Uh, I'll let you kind of... Start with the debauchery that we're looking at right now. I'll start real simple. Okay, I I'm out here defending Kenneth Walker's honor, but not to the point you know where I still think he's an elite asset. He's taken a massive hit. Okay? Real quick, real quick, can I give you something before? I don't want to cut you off, but I do say when I pull the warp up, what I do like to do is see like this is a newer patron. I hope Master Vader. I hope you got the warp tool because it's there's not that many Mike when I pull it up and I scroll that that list looks like you and I. And Master right. Vader has one of those type portfolios in Sleeper. So if you don't have it, man, get the Warp Tool. It's worth every penny for this many leagues. Go ahead. So defend Kenneth Walker. But let's just be honest. Generically, his value, like I'm comfortable. You want to give me a first and a second. We're going to have a real strong conversation about how much I want to defend Kenneth Walker's honor. Like I might be Jon Snow out here or looking like Jon Snow with that sword up, man. I'm ready. First and a second. As soon as them, them horses start getting close and them horses in the first and the second, I might drop that thing. Like, I, yeah, get like, low, uh, try to try to try to blend in with the dead bodies. Like, yeah. you know, I'll just hopefully I don't get run over. I'm good. OK, so if I start there, me. Adam, and I keep it simple, <laughs> we're having a real conversation about oh, just the no. generic first and the second. We're having a conversation. Sure. We, we ain't having a conversation about who I like more, Joe Burrow or Trevor Lawrence. It's definitely Joe Burrow, and this is no slight against Trevor Lawrence, but Joe Burrow is, what, top four quarterback, no question about it. The tier after him, you can have the question, and Trevor Lawrence falls into that tier after, but the top four, pretty simple for me. It's Patrick Mahomes, tier by himself. It's Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, in whatever order you want to put them, two, three, and four, and there's no question for me. So if I'm already sitting here and I'm going – you came pretty close on my Kenneth Walker price. Like, we're having a discussion, and you want to give me the better quarterback, in my opinion? Like, by far and away, I don't have to pay any tax? Anything? I, I don't get to pay? Okay. This is easy. Go ahead. Here you go. Well, I mean, but <laughs> that this. see, see, that's where, like, the, a deal when I look at this, there's, there's so many things on this that have to be discussed, okay? First and foremost, the person getting T-Law and K. Walker – they, they decided to name themselves the process. Like, what kind of fucking process is this? I mean, genuinely. Like, when I look at a trade like this, before I even analysis, the, the, the picks are on the wrong side. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm thinking like I'm reading it wrong. It's been a long day. What, what am I looking at, right? And then you start really looking. You're like, okay. First and a second for Kenneth Walker for me, Mike, is a sell immediately. Now, I'm I'm with you. It's basically like I like Walker because I've seen the hate coming his way because of Charbonnet, and I'm like, all right, you guys are taking it too far. Basically, that's yeah. that's my defense. It's not that there's not reason for concern. It's that you guys are panicking. It's 
there's someone in town, but it's not, you know, get off of Kenneth Walker. That's where it feels like the community's going. First and a second, okay. I, I'm off of Kenneth Walker. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, sucked for luck. That that pick, the name of that, I'm I'm already intrigued because this is this seems like a team that's very capable of tanking. Um, but man, like a single first even for Walker. Lineup start eleven. I think it's close depending on what I look at the team with. First and a second, no way. And then it, there's no way in the world, Mike. Tell me, it, it, I even if you think T Law is due for a on par season with Joe Burrow. Like, I don't think there's convicted enough people anywhere that would just take that deal one for one. There's just no way. Even the most convicted manager won't do that. Right? Maybe maybe next year. Right. I'm talking – yeah, correct. I'm talking now, yeah. Maybe. Right now, you got to be insane, man. You got to be uh, Trevor Lawrence's mom, I guess. <laughs> like, like, I don't his, – his wife, is he married? But if, even if he's if, married, maybe you maybe you're like, oh, no, I got to ride with my man. Like that's that's ride or die. Like part of his family. Yeah. You have to be Trevor Lawrence's. I'd be hard pressed, man. I want to find out in the comments. Is there maybe, anybody? Yes. There's no way. Even if it's a free league, why are you doing that? Like, it just <laughs> because that that Clemson that's fan. maybe they're a Clemson fan. They hate Joe Burrow. Well, I'll tell you that's the other thing. If you do that, your process is awful, uh, the process. But (laughs) now let's talk about Wart for a second. Like Joe Burrow last year, 2.49 Warp, higher than any skill player, including Justin Jefferson, Travis Kelsey, Austin Eckler. Elite quarterbacks, baby. Now don't get get it twisted. I'm not sitting here telling you like, oh, yeah, I don't want T-Law. Like that's, that's not the conversation we're having here, right? Like so, T. Law last year. Let's just take a look. Uh, he's you know quarterback five. But here's the crazy part, Mike. Five to three last year is almost a full point in warp. A full win, a whole full win. And I get the and I get a twenty four first and a twenty four second, and I'm losing a running back. Which, as much as I'll defend Kenneth Walker in a lineup start eleven, I am so much more in on. Replacing a Walker type with picks if I have to. Just humor me here. Who was you got? You got that? You still got it? I got it all up right here, buddy. Just look at running backs and look for a running back who's around one full warp, give or take. Doesn't have to be perfect. Point nine. Okay, so there was um, eleven backs last year. Um, who who at, is the guy who's right around one single warp? Uh, it's Aaron Jones and Lenny Fournette. Okay, all right. Where was Kenneth Walker? <laughs> Um, below or above them? Not above. Now here's the crazy part. I'm scrolling. <laughs> I'm scrolling. Twenty-one with no Charbonnet. Now, he, Mike, think about this though. Like, it, it wouldn't it be great for Kenneth Walker to have a little better season than Miles Sanders did last year? Yeah, it'd be awesome. Be awesome. Guess what? Guess him. what? San, guess what? Sanders was last year. Point nine. Point nine, red or on one. Okay. So I mean, you can go get a Jamal Williams, a uh, James Conner, a you know Damian Pierce, Devin Singletary, and be at the same warp. So it's just red. There's nothing about that side to to summarize this. There is nothing about that side that says the process. I'm just. Ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. <laughs> the proceeds. It's actually not even the two S's. It's E-E-S. I don't even know anymore what I'm looking at, Mike. Um, I need to offer this trade. That's the last one we got. Listen, I want Joe Burrow to be the thumbnail. I want Joe Boom. Burrow. Joey Burrow. Uh, Joey. I don't I don't like putting a bangle on the thumbnail, but you're right. We'll go Joey Burrow. Yeah. He, he deserves it. He deserves it. Here's the funny thing, man. Just a quick story before we get out of here. We've right. had... We've had Drew, DFB Encounter, on the show, Dynasty Trade Show with us. Cool yep. guy. Cool guy, man. Yeah, it was fun I, kicking it with him, man. I don't know if he celebrated Independence Day because uh, Canada. But, but it was still Because uh, Canada. Said, there's, still, there's a few Canada, Canadians, Can, Canadas, whatever. There's a few ca- Canadas. There's a few of them out there I, I like, and he's one of them. But I remember, uh, was it last year? I think last year he had this thing where it was like, you're too low on Joe Burrow. You're too low. Like on repeat, man, repeat, repeat. And it was, it was irking at me and it actually made me mad and infuriated. And you know what? All along he was fucking right. 
we were all too low on Joe Burrow, and now Joe Burrow is here, and I'm the one advocating to put Joe Burrow on a damn thumbnail on my show. When last year I was like, "Fuck Joe Burrow," <laughs> like I wanted, he's overrated. I'm sorry, you, Joe. I'm hands sorry. up, you, you got me. You got me, man. Um, we Drew were too low. Right. We were too low on Joe Burrow. Damn it, we were too low on Joe Burrow, especially in I mean in Dynasty, we were too too, we were too low. Um, whew. Man, I wish I had. I wish I was. I wish I would have bought in more to the Drew discussion because I, 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 I have. I have some Burrow, Mike, but like I know if I would have been convicted around that time, I would be. I would be flush what? with some Burrow, <laughs> right? If you do, if you did have some Joe Burrow, you could send him your first and a second. You could get back Trevor Lawrence and Kenneth Walker. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, these these were good deals. I like that the new patrons they made them so easy. Uh, there was a lot I didn't need Warp for, but the ones we dive into, just to reinforce it with Warp, is what I love doing because it confirms or makes me change my analysis. It really does. Because I go, this is how I feel before I even look at it, and either I was right, and my, yes. I know my, my process is good, or I'm going, listen, whatever the hell I've been spouting is some bullshit. I need to reevaluate this because this ain't what the numbers are telling me. The numbers tell me com something completely different, which is great because it keeps you honest and lets you know whether or not you're on the right track. Right? But, that, but that's, doing it that, that's one of the best parts about it, man, is that if you are able to, you know, remove your biases and trying to be Mr. Right Guy all the time, if you're able to do that, you have a chance to correct it, right? When probably not everyone actually has the ability to look at this and is looking at it and caring about it. Right. So th that's one of the things I think that's so exciting, Mike. I'm going to plug it again, the uh, the Dynasty Mind Warp coming up with Scott and myself. Um, looking at the information and being able to take away your priors, confirm the ones that you are validated for, but then also saying, all right, you know, I probably looking at my roster now was too heavily invested in tight end. Why did I do this? I don't know. But guess what? The market for some of those guys allows you to get out and get into other right. things that matter more for your roster construction. You can correct it. Like you're not having to live in your decisions that you made, you know, last year or six months ago. So it's time to fix it, man. And that's uh, what the Dynasty Mind Warp is going to be all about, depending on your league, depending on what you're looking at and how the warp tool shows you things. There's so many different ways to get edges. And I'm excited for that series, man. So if you're into the warp that's tool, uh, if you're not in the warp tool, but you're interested, uh, make sure you're checking that out when it does come out. So uh, plug that. And then, Mike, obviously, the warp tool itself, southharmonff.com. Go take a look at that. Koopa's warp tool is, uh, as you see, we're putting on the trade show. We talk about an AMA. It's it's just a game changer for us. It's now a part of the repertoire. It's part of the process. Speaking of the process from the last trade, um, it's part of the real process that we have here. The warp tool. Also, uh, if you do want your deals featured on the show, you want to flex, you know, you get Joey B in the picks. Come on, man. Patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. I, I don't know if that was a dollar tier guy or not, but that is the best dollar you ever spent. If you get the flex Joey B in two picks. I mean, I, hey, I got, well, I'm, I'm at a loss couple, for words, man. A couple thousand people going to see that and see how, how. You're going to be hit up. You're going to be famous because people are going to ask you, what is your secret? Yeah, he's going to have, um, what is it? What, what was it? Master Vader, right? They're going to start really calling him master, you know? Don't forget the underscore. Yeah, the, <laughs> don't forget the underscore. Don't forget the underscore. Oh, Very good one, man. Very what was the, I mean, there was a couple lopsided ones, obviously. Uh, any of the deals that really stood out to you today? Uh, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I like the discussion on, on mine and, and just kind of how we have the process play out where it yeah. yep. doesn't have to be these home run, you know, Joe Burrow, in a first and a second, you know, kind of deal that we ended the show with. But, you know, take your take your wins, trust your process, trust the warp tool, t trust all the tools at your disposal, you know, ADP, warp tool, uh, trade calculator bias you know, that people have Twitter bias, you know, if somebody's getting the hype and you're like, I don't understand why, but okay. You yeah. Trust these kind of tools and combine them all. And you can make some very, very reasonable deals that other people look at and go, Oh yeah, this is easy. I can get this done. But in the long run, they're home runs. They're slam dunks. You're, you'll be rounding the bases, man. Slow trot. Just taking your victory. <laughs> Let's go. Well, that, that was the thing about the trade show to me, Mike is, uh, 
yours was a process oriented discussion, right? And I liked your side. And then I really thought the Zach deal uh, with Worthy still yes. was a good discussion. And then, you know, all of a sudden deal three and the rest of the show was off the rails. Was, and we were, we were just, I mean, it was just gloat season for all the shitheads, right? It was just a flex season. Um, I guess it's July and there's not, <laughs> there's not a lot of like, you know, true crazy good process deals out there. So that's what we got no. for you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you want to flex, come, come do it here. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to do any of that, don't want to give us any money. If you could just go down, hit the like and subscribe button. We are thrilled to be at 2000 subs. Um, hope to keep giving you guys the value that you want. You keep subbing. If you do, we keep putting out content. I can promise you that. Yes. Like, it's crazy, man. We didn't hit a K, 1K subs, until the season was over. And before the next season starts, we're at two, which is – it's mind-blowing <laughs> to me, honestly. Like, I mean, Mike, when we I'll started sh- this on the Patreon that we had, right, it was like a joke, really. Like, we just wanted to have time to talk and discuss our little process and not bash the keyboard, you know, a couple hours talking Dynasty. Like, let's just get mics and let's just talk about it, right? Let's 30, 40 let's people listen. We'll see what happens. It's not like a thing we plan to get to here. And uh, the fact that people keep tuning in, man, it amazes me. I'm excited to keep doing it. And listen, you keep subbing, you keep liking, commenting. We keep bringing you trades. Promise that. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to say it because it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay? It's, it's not going to happen. Uh-oh. But we, you just talked about doubling it. Right, we we doubled it before the season even started. We got basically two months before the season starts. Basically two months. I swear to God, Adam, if we can hit, we can double two K to four K before the season starts. Before the oh, it ain't game of the year. Okay. I, I will I will do a trade show with my shirt off, like I'm Burt Kreischer of fantasy football. I'll Wait. tell you what. I'll tell you what. Speaking of doubling down, if we get the four K subs before the season starts. Two shirtless men doing the trade show. I'll say this. The problem with that, Mike, is that I don't think that's going to help people get the subs to 4K. Nobody wants to see both of us with our shirts off. Some old dad bods out here. <laughs> I promise I'll work on my tan, too, so it's not so glaring coming back. Yeah. yeah. You know. White whale. <laughs> listen, man. The, the, there's, you know, the camera set up, the, the ring lights, the lights. It can do yeah. some things. But once the shirts come off, it can't fix what, what we've got going on, man. But uh, if we get to 4K, listen, I'll, shirts off. I don't know that YouTube will allow it, like if it'll even let it stay up there. But I'll, I'll do it, man. I'm in. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe it will have to be unlisted. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have do one, it. I promise. We'll get everybody <laughs> to link to it. All right, man. Your discretion. <laughs> we we uh, other than that, that's uh, that's all we got. Um, if you're interested in that, tell a friend. You know, uh, we got to get to 4K in in like a month, so um, Let's go. we'll happily do that. Otherwise, that's all we got, man. We'll see you back here, same time, same place, next week, Saturday morning for the Dynasty Trade Show. We're out of this thing. Peace. Love y'all.